So we're in section uh, 3.2, and we're talking about quadrilaterals. So first off, right up there at the top of your graphic organizer, it says quadrilateral. Let's remember what, what a quadrilateral is. So what are we what are we talking about? Something that has four sides. A quadrilateral is just a four-sided shape. So up there in the top in the box that says quadrilaterals, you can put four-sided shape. That's what we're talking about today, is four-sided shapes. So up to the left, the first one that we're going to talk about is a trapezoid. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to list what, what makes them special. So a trapezoid, notice that all of these on this page, all of them are quadrilaterals. So quadrilateral is the big, is the big group. Trapezoid, what makes a trapezoid special is it has only one pair of parallel sides. So that's what makes a quadrilateral a trapezoid. And on your... Does it have to be on the top or on the bottom? No. As long as it has one pair, that makes it a trapezoid. Usually they draw them that way, but it doesn't have to be that way. So on your shape, your shape looks like this. Um, the way we show parallel lines is we put arrows on, and the, the sides that have the same number of arrows are parallel. So on your shape, if you put arrows, that would show that this, this pair of sides is parallel. So that's what makes a trapezoid special. It has one pair of parallel sides. And below that, we have an isosceles trapezoid. There is an isosceles triangle. Yes, ma'am. So does that does that trapezoid not have a center? Yeah, trapezoids don't don't have a don't necessarily have a so center. Um, for talking about like for a central angle or something, you really central angle only works for a regular regular polygon. So trapezoids, because their sides aren't all the same, a trapezoid wouldn't be regular. So an isosceles trapezoid, it's a trapezoid, so it has one pair of parallel sides. What makes an isosceles trapezoid special is that the non-parallel sides. are congruent. So on your drawing there, and we won't we won't do every single drawing this way, but uh, on your drawing we would have These sides are parallel, so it has one pair of parallel sides, and these sides would be congruent. And that's what makes an isosceles trapezoid. One pair of parallel sides, non-parallel sides congruent. So those are two special kinds of special kinds of quadrilaterals. So let's move over to the middle. And underneath the quadrilaterals, the next one is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral
that has what makes a parallelogram special is that it has two pairs of parallel sides. Once we get two sides that are parallel, some, some, special, some other special things happen. The opposite sides are congruent. This also makes opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. <coughs> so, what is what, what does supplementary mean? Adds up to one eighty. Just as a reminder, what does consecutive mean? You know what consecutive means? Next to. Consecutive means next to. So angles that are next to each other, uh, you can think of them as one after the other. You can think of them as neighbors. Consecutive angles are angles that are next to each other. So that's what we mean by consecutive angles. And the diagonals. bisect each other. So all kinds of special things happen with parallelograms. Well, what does bisect mean? Evangeline? They cross, and they cross in a special way. Anybody remember bisect? What was it? Well, they, they, they intersect. Bisect means cut in half. Is that what you're going to say? Um, directly in the middle. Yes. Yeah, so they, they cross each other right in the middle. So the bisect means cut in half. So we can't put all this information on the drawing. Uh, we'll put a little, I'll make a drawing and we'll talk about it here really quickly. So on your on your graphic organizer, your parallelogram looks like this. So the opposite, we have two pairs of parallel sides. So those sides would be parallel. And those, these two sides would be parallel. The arrows, same number of arrows means parallel. The opposite sides would be congruent. So these two sides would be congruent. These two sides would be congruent. Opposite angles are congruent, so that means that angle and that angle are the same. And that angle and this angle are the same. So across from each other, the angles are the same. Consecutive angles, next to each other, neighbors, one after the next. These two angles are supplementary. These two angles are supplementary. These two angles are supplementary. So any two angles that are next to each other are supplementary. And if we drew in the diagonals from corner to corner, those diagonals would cut each other in half. So as soon as we make a parallelogram, we get all kinds of interesting things that happen. So let's go down to the right and talk about a rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram. It's connected to the box that says parallelogram there. So a rhombus is a parallelogram. It has everything, it has all of these things 
that a parallelogram has. So it has all of these things that are true about a parallelogram are true about a rhombus, but a rhombus has a couple of other extra things. All four sides are congruent. And the diagonals are perpendicular. And what does perpendicular mean? What angle? The, they do cross, but they cross at a specific angle. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. So in a rhombus, all four sides are congruent, and the diagonals are perpendicular. So on your, on the rhombus on your sheet there, I can draw a decent rhombus here. All the sides would be the same length. And that makes the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. So rhombus is a parallelogram. It has all of these things true. The opposite sides are congruent. The opposite angle is congruent, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, all four sides are congruent. And the diagonals are perpendicular. Questions on a rhombus? Yes. The diagonal goes from corner to corner. So if I drew the diagonal of this of the rhombus in here, it would be that's a diagonal and that's a diagonal. And in a rhombus, this diagonal that would be 90 degrees. So the diagonal goes from corner to corner. All right, so let's go over to the left and talk about rectangles. Rectangles are also parallelograms. So a rectangle has all the properties of a parallelogram. Everything we listed in a parallelogram would also be true of a rectangle. But rectangles have four right angles. And again, right angles means 90 degrees. So a rectangle is a parallelogram with four 90 degree angles. And the other thing that's special about rectangles is the diagonals are congruent. So a rectangle has all everything we listed inside the parallelogram, plus it has four right angles, and the diagonals are congruent. So questions on rectangles? Um, so what we would do is if we had a rectangle like so, so there are my diagonals. And if we called, if I call this a, B, C, D. Because uh, if I put marks on here, it's hard to tell if I mean the, just this part or the whole thing. 
So I would say that AC <coughs> equals DB. So that whole length <coughs> equals that whole length. And then our last one is a square. And a square is a parallelogram. It's also a rectangle and a rhombus. So everything that's true about a parallelogram, about a rectangle, and about a rhombus is true about a square. The main, the main things to remember about a square, and we, we know the first one already, is four congruent sides and four right angles. When this happens, some special things happen with the diagonals. So it has the diagonals have all the things that the diagonals of a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus have. So the diagonals bisect each other. The diagonals are congruent. are perpendicular. So a square has all the properties of a parallelogram, all the properties of a rectangle, all the properties of a rhombus. So that means it has four congruent sides and four right angles. And the diagonals bisect each other, are congruent and perpendicular. Questions on squares. And the, the arrows there show how the how the shapes are related to each other. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, <coughs> a parallelogram, all of these are quadrilaterals, a parallelogram, and then rectangles and rhombuses are parallelograms, and a square is a parallelogram, rectangle, and a rhombus. Um, the kites, we'll fill in the kite a little later. We're not going to do a lot of lot with kites in this class. So we'll fill in the, the definition of a kite a little later. Um, so the last thing I want to do is just quickly, I want to draw an Euler diagram for our shapes. If we put how they're related to each other into an Euler diagram. So, my big category here is quadrilateral. The second big category that we talked about is parallelograms. I forgot one thing in here. We have a smaller category for um, I'll put trapezoids over here. So we have a category inside quadrilaterals for, for trapezoids. And then our, our next big category was parallelograms. So we have a big category for parallelogram. And then we have rectangles and rhombuses.
like so. So this is going to be a rectangle, and this is going to be a rhombus. And then right here in the middle, where rectangles and rhombuses overlap, is what? Square. So this would be our Euler diagram for the information that we just um, that we just talked about. So any questions on this? We're going to spend the next couple of days uh, just working with with these special quadrilaterals. All right.